In the fourth quarter of game five, the time Jordan usually takes over, he managed just two points. Keep in mind that Harper's absence means Jordan spends considerable stretches guarding Gary Payton. Another drain on Jordan's energies as the Bulls, the league's oldest team, play their 100th game of the season tonight. As for Seattle, right now, Sean Kemp could be the series MVP. Gary Payton has come alive the last couple of games. Rodman, very quiet, game five in Seattle. Michael Jordan. Tony Kukoc has come on for the first time. The Bulls obviously would prefer having Kukoc come off the bench. Jordan for Longley. Scotty Pippen continues to play perfect basketball. The 95-96 NBA season marked Michael's first full season back from retirement and he led the Chicago Bulls to a 72-10 regular season record, the fourth NBA championship in six years, and he achieved this while wearing his 11th signature shoe, the Air Jordan 11, which was the eighth to be designed by Tinker Hatfield. The design inspiration according to Tinker was a push mower and the ruggedness and effectiveness of the push lawn mower is what helped inspire him with the design. The first pair to release was in November 1995 and they were the Concord 11s. 
Prior to releasing, Michael was wearing sample versions during the 1995 Eastern Conference Finals and for each game he wore them, he was fined $5,000. The reason MJ was fined $5,000 per game is that the NBA dress code at that time dictated that teammates were supposed to wear shoes that had the same primary colors. And his teammates were wearing primarily black shoes while MJ's were primarily white. This led to the $5,000 per game fine. In 1996, four more pairs released. The first to drop this year were the Columbia 11s. Now I'm not sure if anybody knows this, but Jordan only wore this pair once on court during his career, and that was during the 1996 All-Star Game where he took home the All-Star MVP title. Also released were the True Red and Cobalt IE Low model, and probably the most iconic shoe in the Jordan lineup, the pair he wore on court when they won the NBA title in 1996, the Black Red 11. Retail cost in 1996 for these OG models was $125. It wouldn't take long for the shoe to make a retro appearance and four years later in 2000, Nike gave us the first retro of the Concord 11. The movie Space Jam came out in 1996 and sneakerheads wanted that special PE that MJ wore in the movie and on court. December 13th, 2000 was the date that the shoe retailed and if you check your calendar, that's a Wednesday. Prior to this shoe, retros were released mostly during the week, but when Jordan Brand saw kids ditching school to line up for the Space Jam 11s, they moved their releases to Saturday mornings. So next time you have to wake up early on a Saturday morning to cop a retro, you know why. 2001 was a huge year for the 11, and it started with the first retro of the Columbia 11, and on March 3rd of that year, Jordan Brand would bring us the first appearance of the Cool Grey 11. In 2001, the retail price went unchanged and the shoes were still retailing for $125. For the first time ever, four pairs of Air Jordan 11s in a low silhouette would release. The colorways to drop on that day were the Varsity Reds, Columbia Blues, and two colorways exclusive in women's sizing, the Citrus 11 Lows and the Metallic Silver 11 Lows. Nike and Jordan brand weren't done with this new low model yet and three more pairs were released. On May 26, two snakeskin 11s were released with one pair in men's sizing and the other in women's. And one month later, the white light zen gray pair would release and retail price for the lows was $115. And lastly, to close up the year, Jordan Brand would give us the first retro of the black red 11s when they dropped on December 15. 2003, two pairs dropped in the IE silhouette. The first pair to release were the black varsity reds and those were followed by the cobalt. Price remained unchanged for the IE model and retail was still $115. Only one pair released in 2006 and that pair was the Air Jordan 11 DMP which released with the DMP 6s. The price for this pack was $295 and to this date this is still the highest reselling pack from Jordan brand with sets going for around $1200. I'm not sure why or who made this decision, but in 2007, Jordan Brand dropped six pairs of the Air Jordan 11 IE. Things kicked off on June 30th when three pairs released in a black zest white colorway, a silver zest white colorway, and a woman's exclusive in a black metallic gold colorway. On July 21st, the ladies got another exclusive in a white and varsity maze, and the last two pairs of the model released on August 4th when the white zest argan blue and argan blue zest white pairs dropped. Pairs still retailed at $115. Things cooled down in 2008 and it was a slow year for the model with only one pair releasing which was the return of the Bread 11 as part of the CDP pack. That pack released December 20th for $310. In 2009, Nike and Jordan brand officially started the holiday retro 11 tradition and on December 23rd the Space Jam 11s would retro. There was a slight difference between the 2000 and 2009 pairs. In 2000, the script across the tongue read Jumpman Jam, but for the 2009 pair for unknown reasons, Jordan Brand would change the text from Jumpman Jam to the standard Jumpman Jordan. Also changing was the price. In 2009, retail was $175. Keeping things moving, and we're now in 2010, and Jordan Brand turned 25 years old. To celebrate this, they released the Air Jordan 11 Silver Anniversary, and unique to this pair was the missing Jumpman on the collar. However, you may see some collectors with pairs that do include the Jumpman, and it's rumored that only 25 pairs of those are in existence. On December 23rd, the Cool Grey 11 would make its first retro appearance, and they retailed for $175. 2011 gave us three pairs. The first two released that year came in the IE silhouette, with the first pair releasing July 16th in the black varsity red colorway, and the other on August 13th in a white metallic silver black colorway. To finish off the year, the Concord 11s would make another appearance when they released on December 23rd. 
Unfortunately, people are stupid and the release led to this. People who waited in line all night long to get the new Air Jordan basketball shoes flooded into Lafayette Square Mall just after 7 this morning. They literally broke a door off the hinges. Several people were trampled while others crawled over them to get inside. It was a few people that was on the ground. I jumped over them and kept running. You know, it's Michael Jordan. That's what he do. This was one of his, his most known shoes. 11 Concourse exclusive. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I ain't been out in 11 years. Shoppers in a hurry to get in line left behind shoes that had been on their feet and some of their clothes. Dozens of Metro police officers responded to malls around the city to help with crowd control. 2012 would be the first time since 2001 that the Air Jordan 11 Low would release. The pair to drop on May 5th were the White Varsity Red, and on December 21st, the Air Jordan 11 Black Red would release for the fourth time. 2013 would follow the same pattern as the year before with Jordan Brand giving us a low and a mid. The low to release were the Tuxedo 11s, which dropped on June 8th, and the mids were the Gamma 11s, which dropped on December 21st. Flip the calendar over to 2014 and we got five pairs of 11s. The first three pairs came in the low silhouette with the first releasing on April 19th in the nightshade snakeskin colorway. May 3rd would mark the first time we would receive the Concord colorway on a low. And on June 14th, Jordan Brand would give us the infrared 23 11 lows. Two pairs of mids would release this year. The first was the Legend Blue 11s followed by the Pantone 11s, which came as part of the Gift of Flight pack with a 29. Retail hit $200 for the Legend Blues, and the Gift of Flight Pack retailed for $500. It's now 2015 and another five pairs release. Things kicked off on April 11th when Jordan released the Georgetown 11 Lows and on May 23rd the Black True Red 11 Lows. When we started this video, the low was retailing for $115 and by this time it had raised to $170. Three pairs of the IE Silhouette released and the first to drop were the Cobalts on August 1st followed by a new colorway of the model in a black militia green colorway and the referee IE. So the interesting thing about the referee colorway is that there was a rumor that these were made by Jordan Brand to be worn by the refs. So it's true, the referees did wear this shoe in the 95-96 season, but it was not made for them. For some reason, and this doesn't seem to be known by many people, but the model was originally planned to be a general release and it even scheduled to come in grade school sizes, but for some unknown reason, it never made it to retailers. And wrapping up 2015 was the shoe made to honor the greatest team in NBA history, the Air Jordan 11 7210. Of course, the very next season, the Warriors finished their season with a 73-9 and record, but fell short of the NBA title. So for now, and until a team comes along that changes my mind, the Bulls of 95-96 are the greatest team ever. And here we are in 2016, and so far, three pairs have released with more on the way. June 4th gave us two pairs of the Air Jordan 11 Low. The first came in Midnight Navy with a gum bottom, and releasing alongside those were the Cherry 11 Lows. Just a couple months later, on August 27th, Jordan Brand dropped the Metallic Gold 11s as part of their Olympic collection. And of course, there's more to drop this year when the Space Gem 11, Suede 11s, and women's exclusive Velvet 11s release. And that's the history of the Air Jordan 11, and anything that happens from here on out is the future. If you enjoyed this video, and I hope you did, hit that like button. If you're new around here, subscribe, join the squad. If you have something to say, leave it in the comments below. And I'm out!